I think I'm going to do just do half of this message, and then I'm going to we're going to pray and dismiss. Are we already online, Ronnie? Okay. Uh, the title of this message is God's Untapped Fountains. God's Untapped Fountains. How many know where these fountains are? I'm not going to tell you yet. I just wanted to see if you knew. <clears throat> Let's start with John chapter 4, 7 through 15. Everybody knows this story very well. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. I tell you what, his disciples couldn't leave him alone. He was going to stir up something somewhere, wasn't he? Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you what? And he would have given you, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, verse 11, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? <clears throat> you are not greater than our father Jacob. Oh, if she had just had the understanding at that moment. She, I bet she wanted to take them words back, didn't she? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him. This is what I want us to focus on right here. <clears throat> but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him. Who's I? Jesus. Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him. There's a lot of people giving you stuff to tell you this will quench your desire. This will quench what you need. This will provide what you need. There are people out there taking drugs and drinking because they think that that's what they need. But guess what? When the drugs run out and don't have their effect, when the alcohol leaves your system, you're still left wanting. I have bought many things in my life, and I love when I first get something new. I'm excited about it at first, aren't you? How many of you have ever wasted money on something? You said, I really shouldn't buy this, but I want to feel good right now. You looking at a pair of shoes, ladies, or a, a new rifle, Ricky, or me, an electronic, or some type of computer electronic, and you say, man, if I get this, man, I'll feel good. And when you get it, you're so excited. After a while, what are you doing? You're throwing them shoes in the closet. Isn't it funny? When you first get those shoes, boy, you might wrap them up. Back in the pack, Dwayne, you can just exclude yourself from this. Dwayne has the, his pair of shoes he had in the seventh grade. He still has the paper that goes around them in the original box. I mean, that's just amazing to me. See, you can exclude yourself from this. Uh, he knows he's abnormal in that area. <laughs> but you know when you get that pair of shoes don't you take real good care of them you go and man you gotta you make a place for them oh, get these other shoes out of the way these are old or put them in a box or put them out of the way you don't want anything to scuff those but over time you get used to having them don't, don't you and the joy that you got out of them, it's not the same. You may still appreciate it. You may still, or you're thankful for it. But it's not the same when you first get them. 
I've seen people when they get new shoes, and you can tell they, they don't usually do this, but when they're talking, they're sticking them out, they're looking at them, they're posing, they're doing all this stuff because they feel like the woman in the, in the magazine. <laughs> We do the same thing with our electronics. My phone is old. It's, it's messed up. I, I don't hardly ever tell anybody, hey, look at this. <laughs> but when you get a new one, what do you do? Look at what all this can do. You want to show everybody, don't you? No matter what we get joy out of, no matter what gives us fulfillment, the only thing that stays and remains is Jesus. Now you say, oh, I've gotten, I've, I've felt distant from him before. I felt like it's not working. Listen, but it isn't that that God has changed. It's just your position or your closeness or the presence that you feel. Because no matter what, every time the presence comes around you, it will always overwhelm you. Why? Because he's the source of you. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will what? Become in him. Will become in him what? A well of water springing up to eternal life. I told you I wasn't going to take long, so let me move quickly. Last week, I had talked to you guys about the deceiver who is the enemy and his attack on us, which keeps us from being able to discern the knowledge of his words, uh, discern God's plan for our lives by changing the way we interpret things around us. I told you last week in that lesson that you can't discern the knowledge of God by your senses. It takes the Spirit of God to discern the knowledge of God. And only the Spirit of God knows the deep things of God. Amen? That's in the Scripture. Instead of us listening to Him on the inside, which is what Adam should have done before the fall and what Eve should have done before the fall. We listen to our own minds now and our own senses more than him. He has to, God, has to retrain us. Come on. See, God created you for a purpose. He's got a plan for your life. And the enemy knew that Oh, this well of water that is in them. They've been made in his image. It is going to spring up into eternal life. So I've got to do something to pollute it. How many of you has God saved? <laughs> Amen. Isn't it funny? Even when you get saved... It doesn't mean that everything in your life is exactly the way it should be. Why? Because you have this brain that has went through some things. And you're used to trouble, aren't you? You're used to fighting. You're used to fighting by yourself. And so it can take a while for you to start to change your mentality and realize that the fight that you fight, you don't fight by yourself. It can take a while for God to get you to say, listen, I can't do it by myself. I need your help. I'm talking about after we get saved. God, I, I've been, I know you saved me, but I've still been trying to fix it with my own hands. It can take a while for him to get you to say, all right. I get it. The battle is the Lord's. <laughs> See, we read the scriptures so that he can retrain us. Has anybody ever read a manual for an, a complex electronic device? And when you read through one time, you knew everything about it. I don't believe there's a person in the building. If that's true, then you would be able to read it one time and burn it up and never look at that manual again. I am very tech savvy, but I still end up going back to the manual until I get it. Oh, 
That's what I got to do. That's what I got to do. That's why God says to study to show yourself approved. That word, our bodies, our life is much more complex than an electronic device. But God has made it to be simple. Why? Because he wanted your, his spirit to be inside of you, guiding you. Read my word, he says. Meditate on it. And let the Holy Ghost teach you and train you. Why? Because he knows that you were polluted at one time. But he has redeemed you. But there are still some some thinking of things of your thinking that are not right. <laughs> How do I know? Because the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And what do we do when something happens? We fear. But didn't God give us? <laughs> did he give us a spirit of fear? No. So the enemy reigns by bluff. He only rules when you're ignorant about something. That's why he tries to keep you in the dark. That's why you face trials and tribulation. Come on. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. I want you to look at John 10.10. 10. I'm going to skip that one there. John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh not. I read you this last week. But for. Why did he come? To steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said. Who's the I? Jesus. Jesus said, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. We're going to close on this point in just a moment. I want you to grab a hold of this because this is going to be really good. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come, Jesus, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The word abundantly, <coughs> excuse me, in the Greek is the word petty sauce, petty sauce. That's what abundantly is. And it means exceeding some number, measure, rank, or need, over and above, more than is necessary, surpassing that which is common. Again, exceeding some number, measure, rank, or need, over and above, more than is necessary, surpassing that which is uncommon. So Jesus is saying, I have come that you might have life. And that you might have it to the point that it is uncommon. How many wants uncommon? Surpassing. That you might have life. More than is necessary. This is what abundantly means. Uh, we know the root word for abundantly is what? Abundance. Right? The word abundance in the Greek is the word perisuo. Peri, excuse me, perisuo. Perisuo. I want you to listen to this. It means to abound, to overflow, overflows unto one and falls in large measure. The same word, listen to this, you've got to get this. I about shouted out of my chair when I, when I discovered this. The same word for abundance is used in the Bible when discussing rivers and fountains. The same word for abundance is the same word. That word, perisuo, perisuo. It's the same word that is used when we're referring to rivers and fountains. Come on. <laughs> Can I tell you what God is wanting to do? See, no matter what you have obtained in life, no matter what you have achieved in your life without him, all of that is just a trickle of your potential that's in you. Come on. 
God has put something in us that is there not for us, but for all of those around you. Come on. That's why the enemy knew, oh, there, there is something in these people that came from him if they understood the potential that they have, if they understood the impact their life could have on others. Because God is wanting to use them, how? As rivers, as ports. When the Bible talks about how God will open up a window of heaven, Windows are people. Come on. God says, I'll give you exceedingly, abundantly above what you can ask or think. Out of men's bosoms shall I give unto you. See, if you keep looking for something magical to happen, I know I've done it before. I'm doing my bank account, and I just want to bring it up, and, you know, it'd be like Monopoly. Bank error in your favor. Get $2 million. <laughs> but I haven't had it happen yet. But God can speak to somebody. It doesn't matter how long they have saved money. It doesn't matter how long they put that money back. If God has destined it to come into your hands at a certain point in time, there is nothing that can cause it to stay there. The Egyptians, or excuse me, not the Egyptians, the, the Hebrew children were slaves to the Egyptians. But when they left, God gave them great favor and just said, here, take the wealth of the country when you go. God can transfer to you. That's why I, I have to remind myself I don't care what position I feel like I'm in. At any time, the King of Kings and the Lord of, Clo and the Lord of Lords can say, it's time for a transfer. <laughs> and he can bring into my life whatever it is that I need. The windows of heaven are people. He has always used people. That's why I make sure to tell God, Lord, everything I have, I know it's not mine. It belongs to you. <laughs> Even if a person doesn't obey and let something flow, they will be in misery and God will just open up another window. You remember the rich man? I've obeyed all of your laws, all of the laws of the book since I was a child. He says, there's one thing you lack. Take everything you have, sell it, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. He went away miserable. Did Jesus worry? Well, that was supposed to happen. No, he said, I'm just going to open up another one. God, if God can... If, if God can get money and finances to come out of the mouth of a fish, do you not think that he can not find some other strange, unusual way to bring something into your hands that you need? I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm going to read you this again before I read this next scripture because this ties it all together. Remember the, work, the word abundance, to abound, to overflow, overflows unto one and falls in large measure. The same word for abundance is used when discussing rivers and fountains. John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, who's me, Jesus, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers. Guess what that word rivers is? 
Perisuo. Abundance. <laughs> Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So God has came to give me life. Yes, God has came uh, to give me life more abundantly. Yes, yeah, so when I hear that, okay, I'm saved now. Now what? He's, I'm going to have life. Oh, you don't understand what he is really saying. He said, there is something in you. Oh, you came from me, God says. I feel the Holy Ghost speaking through me right now. You came from me. Genesis 1, let us make man after our own image, after our likeness. He said, there is a seed that came out of me and I made you. You were made in my image and in my likeness. And it needs some water. It's, oh, I've planted you right where you are in this world. I put you there. I know I know the family that I put you under. I know the place that I made you. I saw your unframed body. You may have achieved a lot all by yourself. But I'm telling you that if you will come to me and submit to me and let me water you. Oh, your seed is thirsty. Your potential is thirsty. And there is something that will happen when you let my living water flow through you. It, there will be a crack in the depths. And there will be things that will come out of you that you never realized that were there. It will go beyond your understanding. Just as you see a little seed. And from that little seed you say, how in the world can a great big tree come out of that with much more fruit out of that one tree that can be planted and that can bring up more trees and more fruit and more trees and more fruit and more trees and more fruit and more trees and more fruit. And more fruit. God says just like that little seed it seems so unordinary it just boggles the mind how much can come out of one seed. God says there is something great in you if you'll let my living water flow through through you, you will see something come out of your life. Oh, it'll spring up out of you. He says, I will make you. You will become as wells of springing water unto eternal life. And out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. Oh, I feel weak. Oh, Oh, Jesus. Oh, flow through me. The devil, you know what he's tried to do? He's a clog. He is a clog. He has tried to bind you down. That's why this song was so moving tonight. Because we face fire. We face trials. And those trials sometimes ha can have an effect on us to where it, the water just trickles. It just slowly flows. And we need some water. We need to feel a refreshing. We need to get a flow. <laughs> oh, if you walk away. If you leave it like it is, if you don't try to change anything, God says that thing will just stay there. But if you will realize that God has a purpose for you and you will not stay that way. I don't care what the devil tells you. He wants you to feel like that water will never run again, that you might as well use that other sink. But God says, listen, I have destined you for something great to come out of you. He says, if you will just let me in, submit it to me. I don't care how bad it looks. I will bring something great out of you. God is not wanting you to say thank you. I have life. He wants you to understand that he wants to give you more than enough. An abundance of life. Something that will spring up as a well unto eternal life out of you. You're supposed to be 
just busting out. God is wanting to uncap the river tonight. He's wanting to uncap the river of your life. He's wanting to uncap the fountain in you. Oh, the devil's tried to keep a cap on you. He's tried to control how much comes out of you. But if you will just trust him and say, God, oh, I'm going to have an explosion. I'm talking about when an oil driller, when they drill and they hit it and that oil spouts up, God is wanting there to be a a rumbling in the spirit and stuff that come out of you. Oh, Jesus. Can anybody feel a rumbling? Oh, oh. I mean, one of those rumbling where all the pipes in the walls are shaking. <laughs> there is a flow that is coming. And there isn't a clog strong enough to stop it. Oh, Jesus. Lord, you can flow through me. <laughs> See, that's my own. If you believe that, you got to tell him yourself. I, Lord, you can flow through me, God. Oh, Lord, I want life and life more abundantly. <laughs> now, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. If you think that the abundance that he's talking about, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you think the abundance that he's talking about is for when you die, <laughs> oh, you're going to get a blessing, yes, but you're going to miss out on what God was wanting to deliver through you. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. <laughs> they were astonished at the doctrine of Jesus. He wants you to get tapped back into the source. So close to the source to where you have access when you need him you don't have to do a whole lot of praying because you're already prayed up. He says, I want you to be tapped into the source so closely to the where when you need it, you just turn it on. And there is a flow. <laughs> you ever have a dog come in your yard and you got the hose? God wants you to be able to, when the devil comes in your yard, say, I dare you to take another step and just be able to turn on full force and just drench the devil. Oh, I want to be in the place where I can, oh, what I shot, I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen, let me tell you something right now. God just said this in my spirit. He said, don't be afraid of the devil. Oh, oh, I get, oh. Listen, he said, don't be afraid of the devil. You don't like what I'm about to say. I'm sorry. You better take it up with the Holy Ghost. He said, don't be afraid of the devil. Why? He said, the devil is afraid of you. Why? He says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He says, I am in you. I am that living water. If you have drank from me, the devil is trying to keep you under bondage. He's trying to mentally handcuff you. He's trying to keep you from realizing the potential that is in you. He said, the devil is afraid of you. More importantly, he's afraid of you getting that understanding. Man. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think about whatever problem you're facing. 
I'm going to give you something that I gave you last week. Anything that tries to stop or prevent you from becoming more like your creator is the destroyer. I was going to stop with that one scripture, but he wants me to give you one more, and then I promise I'm quitting after this. Let me ask you, who is the greatest destroyer? You got it. Jesus. How many of us call the enemy the destroyer sometimes? I'm going to show you a scripture right here, though, that shows just how powerful God is. And then we're going to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this. The one who, 1 John 3, 8, the one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. To destroy the works of the devil. When you have something that can is so powerful, it can destroy it can destroy the destroyer. That's real power. There is nothing that the enemy can do that God ever even breaks a sweat about. In fact, The enemy cannot do anything without God's permission. Remember? He came to God. God said, what are you doing? He was already expelled from heaven. He still had to give an account for what he was doing. Going to and fro in the earth. Look at my servant Job. If you will just let me. (laughs) God could have said no. Things that you're facing. If they're not because of bad decisions you have made. But they are still afflictions and conflict. And attacks and hardships and trials. All it is is that the enemy said, can I? And God said, I will allow it (laughs) because I'm going to use you to strengthen them so that they'll know the glory of God. He will keep you in your time of temptation. He said, I will not allow Anything to come against you that's more than you can bear. So no matter what you face, you can't say, I can't bear it. The fact that you're facing it means God says you can. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Close your eyes. We're going to (laughs) leave. Think about that trial. Think about the things that you're facing. I don't care what it is you're facing. I want you to say this. I know you know it. But it's one thing knowing something and another thing believing it. I want you to think for a second what would make it better. What would fix your solution? It doesn't matter if God answers another way. I just want you to think about what could. Doesn't that make you feel good? (laughs) Now, whatever resolution you come up with in your mind for that situation, as long as it gets resolved, you're going to be happy. Sometimes God will choose a whole different way to resolve it. The point is knowing and feeling that understanding of how good you'll feel when it's resolved. Whatever it is that is preventing that from come, taking place, it's the devil. It's the enemy. It's an attack. 
So I want you just to look at that enemy right now that's trying to prevent. Whether it's trying to, whether the enemy is trying to prevent you from having peace with somebody, whether that enemy is trying to prevent you from having the finances you need, or the devil's trying to steal your time, if he's trying to steal whatever it is you're trying to do for God because he's eating up your time with through other people, whether it is a lack of resources. Whether it's car trouble, whether it's an issue with a person, whether you can't get any peace because of an individual, no matter what it is, the enemy attacks. So I want you to look that devil square in the face. If you're having an issue with a person, you've got to realize it ain't the person, it's the enemy. God opens up windows of heaven. He uses people. The enemy who is a counterfeit, what do you think he uses? So don't look at the person as a symptom. Look at the source of the problem. And not right now, I want you to say this in your spirit. Say, greater is he, the Lord my God, that is in me, me. then he, he. that old rotten devil devil. that is in the world. world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Devil, I'm going to tell you something, and you better listen. Greater is he my God, and even your God, (laughs) than you that are in the world. I am not of this world. I am from another place. I was made by my great God in heaven. (laughs) The Lord Jesus Christ. He is my God. He is my refuge. He is my shield. He is my buckler. He is my sword. He is my deliverer. And I speak right now on his behalf because he has given me the authority to by his blood. And I tell you, devil, the Lord rebukes you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him praise right now. We give you praise, God. Oh, you know, sometimes I even like to make the devil feel like I'm, he's got me. I've, I've been in a corner before, backed in a corner. I've been in my closet, and all of a sudden, God will just give me just the touch that I need. And I'm hearing many voices. I'll be hearing the enemy saying, you might as well give up. You are weak. You are weak and God doesn't want anything to do with weak people. Oh, have you ever heard that before? (laughs) And God will let me know, remind me who he is and who I am to him. And I just like to get the enemy just a little bit closer right before I do this. I've done this two times, I think, in my life. I've said, you're right. I am weak. But the Lord rebukes you. And I have spoken, boy, I could just feel him high telling it out of there. As I crouch, I feel like he's like, oh, I got him. And then, boom. See, it ain't about me or how I feel. God is the same all the time. Don't think, oh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to close. God's just pouring stuff in my spirit right now. Don't think that you have to take a vitamin B shot and get some energy to feel like, listen, that's your senses. That's your flesh. (laughs) Don't think that you got to get in a mentality where you are happy. When you really need to rebuke the enemy, you're going to feel weak. But God says, His strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, because when you understand that you're weak, 
And you have to. God says, I love to get you to the point where you realize that you can't do it and you have to rely on me. He says, that's why I got to take you into the valley because when you're on the mountaintop, you think I am invincible. God says, your power is because of him in you. He said, I take you to the valley because I've got to get you out of the way so that I can remind you of how big of a God I am. So when you feel weak and you feel powerless, don't let the enemy make you think that you're weak because of how you feel. God's power is, has no correlation to how strong you feel or how weak you feel or how powerful you feel. It doesn't matter if you have, if, uh, whether you have feel the spirit or the presence of God. He says, I want you to have the understanding that I am always in you and I am always with you. God says, my power and my authority that I have conferred on you is constant. The devil attacks you because he wants to affect your flesh because if you physically feel a certain way, you'll not use what the Spirit has. The flesh is weak. But remember, the Spirit is always willing. I love that. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God. That is, that is for somebody. I, I, I'm, I am feeling the Spirit of God so strong. That is for somebody. God says, when you don't feel like you can fight, he says, when the odds are against you, when the situation seems overwhelming, he wants you to be able to say, Lord, God, show the devil our armies. The angels are there to do the bidding of those they serve. And guess what? They don't ever get tired. They don't ever sleep. They're not like our physical bodies. They are there to do the bidding of those they serve. He says, if you wake up at 2 a.m. and you call on him, they're there. To do the bidding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I, I'm going to close. I promise. I, I just God is just doing so much. You've got to understand. It doesn't matter how forceful you can say something. It doesn't matter if you feel like jumping or hollering. He says, if you just get the understanding that your voice, that there is power of life and death. If Jesus said, I can just speak to a mountain. I don't have to raise a finger. I don't have to do a whole lot of action. Just speak to it and understand and know the power of your God and the power of faith the size of a mustard seed, then it's just like a victim being able to pick up the phone. It doesn't matter if they can't move. Being able just to get on the phone and say, 
911, I need help. They come immediately. God says, that's the way it is in my kingdom. He says, you don't have to do anything. He says, just call him. Just call him. You don't need to feel good. You don't need to feel happy. It doesn't matter what's going on. He says, your voice carries the weight of the king because you're his kids. All right, I'm spent. I tell you, it feels good just to finally know that I've unloaded everything. (laughs) And I know when I have because I just all of a sudden it's just like, oh, there it went. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Has this touched anybody tonight? Has anybody been blessed? Amen. Give God praise for it because it's all him. Thank you, God. Thank you for touching. Thank you for touching. We want to thank you guys for watching us on the internet. Listen, if you don't know the Lord, oh, you're missing out on an abundance of life. I don't care how successful you think you are. I don't care how happy you think you are. Listen, there is no way for you to have abundant life in this life without the king. God says he came so that you might have life and have more than is necessary. He wants life to flow out of you. You may, be, you may have some really good prescription medicine that you get from the doctor that helps you feel good. And God says, listen, I've got some water for you that you'll never, ever, ever thirst again. Just call upon him right now. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your Savior. Just pray this prayer. Say, God, forgive me. I have sinned. I have fallen away from you. I have fallen away. But I know that I need you. The enemy has attacked me. He's tried to discourage me. He's put me down in a miry pit. He's made me feel like I'm worthless. But I know That in your word, you have given me a way to become the sons of God. And I just ask you to forgive me for my sins right now. Forgive me for everything that I've done wrong. I know that it can happen because your blood, you shed your blood so that I could be forgiven. I accept that sacrifice that you made right now Lord let that atoning blood wash over my spirit right now from the top of my head to the soles of my feet through every limb in my body through my mind through my spirit through my joints and sinews take away everything that I've ever done and forgive me for all of it and never remember it and help me right now to be able to forgive myself help me to take on the mind of Christ and to begin to think the way that you want me to think Jesus I accept you from this day forward I submit to you King of kings and Lord of lords, and I acknowledge from this day forward, you are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, please go to lmcigreenville.org, click contact at the top, and let us know. God bless you. Man, I just want to go back there in the back of the church and just lay down on the floor and just let